All right, what's going on, party people? It is your boy, BQ. This is my first upload in several days. Uh, first upload since I've reviewed Rebellion. I just came back from spending a few days in Missouri slash Illinois with the wife. Had to take care of some business out there, uh, but also, you know, had to get a way to disconnect a little bit. Had a whole weekend of TNA Rebellion, a whole weekend of, or I should say, of TNA Wrestling. And I give all the props into props in the world to you fans who can just watch wrestling, and especially those of you who can watch every company. And um, I can't. I get very. Um, I put it on Twitter. I get very wrestling doubt. It's not even a word, not even a term. But I can only watch wrestling for like one or two hours at a time. As much as I love wrestling, I love TNA, whatever. Uh, to sit through like four hours back to back is a lot for me. It's like very draining. Um, so I had to disconnect a little bit, disconnected from social media a, a little bit. I was, I was floating around on there a little bit for, for the, for the most part, um, just kind of had to really take a mini vacay, just get away from things for a little bit to avoid, um, getting burnt out. There was a time on the channel here about three years ago that I got completely burnt out and just disappeared on my audience for like half a year. Uh, and, and I don't ever want to do anything like that again. So it's, it's important that I disconnect when I need to. There was a story floating around at rebellion time about Tessa Blanchard. And I believe CMLL came out today and said that, uh, speaking on behalf of Tessa Blanchard, that she was remaining with their company and not going anywhere, going to continue to do dates with them. She's even dating one of the wrestlers there. Um, but there was an article that came, or I guess not an article, but a rumor that came out that TNA was in talks with Tessa Blanchard. And I, I don't know the validity. Um, I don't know in what detail that these conversations went. I have no idea whatsoever. But it, it, Tessa Blanchard is, it's a funny topic. She is a funny, funny topic in the world of the TNA fans. Cause most people are on one side of the fence when it, when it's in regard or they're on one side of the fence or the other. There's, there's very few in the middle. Now, when she joined the company years ago, this was one of the biggest signings in the history of the company in the history of the knockouts. The buzz behind it was huge. The WWE slash NXT fans. Cause remember NXT was very hot at the time. Uh, very jealous. You know, why the hell would you sign there? Uh, you should be in WWE wrestling Charlotte Flair, kind of rhymed. Um, but she was she was just a huge deal when it happened, and they were even even positioning her to take over the mantle. Like they were, she, they were, Jake Gil Kim was passing the torch to her. Uh, she was supposed to be the next Gil, the next Mickey James, or whoever at the top of that knockouts division, and then she ultimately moves on to where she's wrestling the dudes and she's beating the dudes every fucking time. Uh, which really pissed me off. Like I, I, I don't have an in, inter, I don't have a problem with intergender wrestling. Like a lot of you do, which is fine. Like we just all have our own opinions. I don't have an issue with it, but the women should not be winning every single time. Like if you were to look at the history of TNA wrestling, intergender matches, record, women versus male, um, or female versus male, I, I would, um, I would imagine it's in the high eighties, ninety percent, uh, win rate for the women, and that's where you're just getting things aren't realistic anymore, but, um, you know, she ultimately became the world champion and then everything went downhill from there because she made some very racially insensitive comments and a lot of fans haven't forgiven her. And I'm one of the first people that tell you, we need to be a more forgiving society. We need to give second chances. Like if I look at myself or you look at yourself, we just all look at each other and say, yo, let's, what are the three worst things we've ever done in our life? And man, you wish you could take them back. And you would also be devastated if those, if any of those three things, let alone all three, were held against you the rest of your life. How could we ever grow? How could we ever move on? So even though I'm, gonna, I'm one of the very first people to say, hey, we got to give people a second chance, the difference with Tessa Blanchard is that she has never came forward and said, I'm sorry. She has never come forward and said, I was wrong. Now, she's had some photos with uh, La Rosa Negra, so that clearly 
they handled things um, behind closed doors. But the wrestling forgive the the wrestling audience is not as forgiving. They want to hear the sorries. They want to hear, hey, this is you know, this is what I meant to say, or this was an accident, or this is how I'm going to make myself better. But she never did that, and that's a really ugly look when someone doesn't know how to uh, just to take blame or just to admit fault and that's how Tessa Blanchard has come off I would welcome personally I would welcome Tessa Blanchard with open arms if she were to come back in the company because I think she's I think she could add a lot Um, it's really not my my business it's not our business um far as how she handles things behind closed doors like i said she if she spoke to la rosa negra awesome it's not really our business but with that being said even though it's not our business wrestling fans need to see growth they need to see change because they will hold things against you for the rest of your life that is how it is fabulous moolah is not even around anymore and they the fans would not allow that battle royal to be named after her you feel me? Um, but I do see a lot of TNA fans that would say, hey, I would welcome her back. You know, I think she would be uh, a real asset to the company. But there's a lot of people who are done with her. They want absolutely nothing to do with her. They don't want, they're, they're tired of seeing the rumors pop up. And it's interesting, but uh, the one thing I just always take it back to is that she just never admitted fault. And until she does that, I don't think she's going to wrestle in the United States. It's insane that NWA didn't even bring her on. It, or MLW. You know what I mean? It's insane that she never wrestled for those companies. But there's just a there's going to be a black eye on anyone who brings Tessa Blanchard on. Now, if Tessa Blanchard three years ago came forward and said, look, I said this. Because she denies these things, right? I said this. Um, it was insensitive of me. Uh, you know, me and this person have had talks. We've had deep dialogue. We have, uh, we've cho- chosen to move past this. I ask for your forgiveness as a wrestling audience. If she did that three years ago. Then maybe today she could wrestle in, in, in the United States again. It's kind of like the Patrick Clark situation where he's doing some indie work, but and, and I'm sure he would love to be on television again, but he came forward when he was ready and said, I was wrong, but I don't think it was his intention to start wrestling on TV the next week. You know what I mean? Like sometimes you've got to just lay the groundwork well in advance, let people know, you know, he took years before he, he stepped forward because he had to do some self-reflection, some growth. And I think people could respect that about Tessa if that's what she said. Hey, over the last couple of years, you haven't heard me apologize because over the last couple of years, I've been working on myself. You know, and and then maybe she continues to work on herself. And then a year or two later, Tessa Blanchard's back on our TV screen and people can move on. But she's handled this in the worst possible way that anybody could. And it's disappointing because I do want to see her on TV again. I, I do want to see her in the ring but if she really said these things these you know racial racially insensitive comments i don't i don't use the word racist or racial i I say racially insensitive because it just means sometimes people just say some stupid ass shit that doesn't even um it's not even necessarily their beliefs but they just say some dumb shit without thinking how it's going to hurt um somebody else you know if she really did say these things then She has to to face the music, you know, but she's been running from it this entire time, wrestling in Mexico, um, almost being completely off the radar. So, um, of course, leave your thoughts in the comments. Like if you would ever want to see Tessa Blanchard back in TNA, I would. uh, But I also think that there's steps that need to happen in order to get there. Like if she was to just show up on screen, you know, I don't know how that would get over. Uh, she definitely would be a heel. She'd be a lifelong heel. I can never see her in a babyface role, but there are steps that she needs to take if she ever wants that second chance here in the United States. 